Uh, first, we wanted to thank our hostess, Patricia Kennedy, for allowing her beautiful home and all of the benefits there, too. She, as you know, is the founder and president, CEO of Step Up for Vets, which is a wonderful organization. The USO, of course, takes care of our brave young American warriors, our men and women in uniform, through their time in the service. And when they revert to civilian rule and uh, come back on home, then Patricia works with them as veterans to try and help them. First of all, we're really honored as a young organization, Step Up for Vets, it's only seven months old, and the USO was sort of our first date in a way. So many of you who were here, <laughs> never miss an opportunity. <laughs> many of you who were here for that very special first evening on May 17th, when we launched Step Up for Vets on Armed Forces Day, know that our first association was so blessed to be with the USO. And Mike has been a champion for what I'm trying to do and has kept us connected to some very important men and women in the armed services. And tonight to ask us to host a special cocktail reception for someone who has given so much to the USO. We're thrilled to be part of this event tonight for Song Gibson. And I thank all of you for coming to help us. Thank you so much. She's counting the silverware, and she's counting the crystal on the way out, so those of us who were in uniform at one time, we kind of have to put the stuff back. <laughs> They'll catch us at the bottom of the driveway, I just know it. Anyway, we uh, in the USO are just delighted. On the 1st of September this past year, we had a new president and chief executive officer who is in, responsible for the activities of the USO throughout the world. And I'm just honored and delighted to introduce you to Sloan Gibson, who's going to tell us a little bit about what's happening with the USO worldwide right now. I'm still learning the art of controlling an agenda. I find myself following two eloquent speakers, as, as I did at our gala in Washington, D.C., where I found myself following Rob Robin Williams. <laughs> uh, and I decided that I would learn from that for next year's gala and change the order of, of speakers. Uh, I also don't control the introductions very well yet either, so I'll, I'm going to work on that also. Uh, as Mike mentioned, I, I've been at this now for uh, like five months, four months, somewhere, and I've lost count already. Uh, I find myself saying thank you a lot. Uh, thank you, uh, Patricia, for your delightful hospitality, for your wonderful introduction. Thank all of you for being here. Uh, thank you for what you do for our troops and their families. I find myself, as I'm out around the world, I got back from the Pacific about two weeks ago visiting our USO centers in mainland Japan, uh, Korea, and Okinawa. And I find myself thanking our troops uh, for their great service. As I did back in August, July and August of last year, uh, I cheated a little bit and started traveling before I started. And, and went to Iraq and Afghanistan and Kuwait. And, and uh, I found- All the pleasure stops. All the pleasure stops, <laughs> that's right. Patricia said, well, you got some traveling beforehand. I said, well, I went to Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh, okay. Um, but I find myself thanking those troops, those great men and women that are serving us uh, all around the world. I find myself thanking uh, wonderful staff people of the USO uh, that I have the opportunity to work with. I've yet to meet one single person that works for the USO anywhere where I felt like they were there because it's a job. Not one person, no matter what they're doing, no matter what role they fill, they were all clearly um, uh, empowered by a passion for the mission of the USO and a genuine desire to do more and do better for our troops and their families. I find myself thanking all of our many generous donors, and, and many of you are, in, are among those ranks. Uh, we could not do. We have a million and a half Americans are active donors to the USO, in addition to hundreds of different corporations around the world. 
We could not do what we do without, without all of you and all of them. I find myself thanking volunteers. Uh, we have worldwide uh, something on the order of 500 employees or staff people in the USO and tens of thousands of volunteers giving hundreds of thousands of hours of service to our troops. You may not know at most of our USO centers around the United States, there are waiting lists of hundreds of people waiting to volunteer at those airport centers, waiting for the opportunity to come in sometime in day or night uh, to make a difference for a soldier or for a family that happens to be through there. One last area that I'll ask you to keep an eye on, uh, it's a pledge to you, uh, it's a pledge that I've also made to uh, Admiral Mike Muller. Uh, if, if you ask, uh, our mission, as we are about to recast it, is to lift the spirits of our troops and their family members. And if that is our mission, who needs us the most? And the folks that are over there in what the, the, the troops call the sandbox, the, the guys that are over there in the sandbox are clearly on that list and their families are on that list. But there's another group that's on that list as well, and those are our wounded warriors and their family members. And we're doing some great things for them right now. We opened a 4,000 square foot USO center at Landstuhl Regional Medical Center in Germany. If one of our troops is, is injured in Afghanistan or Iraq, they're stabilized in country and they're immediately moved to the hospital at Landstuhl, the largest US hospital outside the United States of America. Uh, we've put a 4,000 square foot USO right next door to the hospital and right in between the two barracks that house all of the outpatients that are recovering from wounds and from injuries all over uh, the Persian Gulf and, and in Europe. So we're doing some things for wounded warriors, but there's more that we need to be doing. Uh, everywhere throughout the, the USO, I'm challenging people to look for ways for us to do more, better, to support our troops and their families and we're finding ways to do more better. I can't thank you enough, and I'll end the way I started. Let me thank you again. Thank you for your support of our troops. Thank you support for your support of this USO. Thank you for the great things you're doing for our veterans to help them transition, especially those that are carrying the wounds of war um, for the rest of their lives. There is no way that we can ever repay uh, the debt that we owe those servicemen and women and their families. No way. There's nothing that we can do that will ever be enough to repay that. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Sloan. Now, Sloan's going to be here for another hour, so, you know, when you have a chance to come on up and, and visit, let them, let them know what you're thinking. You have any questions? The same with, uh, with General Harrell and, uh, and Captain Summer. These are the leaders of our military. No evening is complete without a little surprise. So you know, Sloan, um, we're here to certainly recognize the incredible work of the USO. We're here to honor you and support you and congratulate you on the beginning of a, a mission that you are about to go on that I'm sure will be a chapter in USO history. So I can't think of any better way to start that chapter than with a celebration. So I'm very, very lucky tonight that a dear friend of mine and a great, great talent, a jazz artist, and we scored a ballet together for the Joffrey a few years ago, the great Eric Lewis is here to serenade you for the USO's birthday. So Eric. <laughs>